Build your watercolor skills and paint along with me as I show you exactly how to create these simple watercolor cards. Welcome back friends, my name is Shada and today we are going to do some more 15 minute watercolor cards. These are simple projects, they're great for the beginner watercolorist and it gives you something at the end that you can actually use and give to friends and family, which I think is cool. So here's how I go about making these. I always cut proper watercolor paper to size. So you can see I have two pieces of cold pressed water paper already cut and then I have some blank cards. I have these really cute scalloped edge um, flat cards. Those are from Michael's. I think I got them in the bridal section, like the wedding stuff. And then I also have these card and envelope sets from the dollar store. So I never paint directly on cardstock. You want to do this on proper cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper or hot press. Doesn't really matter the texture. And then I have my Mungio paints 48 pan set and I'm using a number three pointed round paintbrush and that is all linked in the video description. I also have two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting, and I'm going to start by mixing up my paint. So hopefully you can see that okay, and we'll mix some of these colors together. I am going to do these fun sort of almost like um, porcelain pots and vases. So I'm mixing up a really dark blue, and this is sort of a cobalt blue with a little bit of purple mixed in. Of course, I'm mixing in lots of water. Um, the palette gives me a chance to mix the colors that I want. I, of course, you can use these paints straight out of the tin. There's no harm or no shame in that. And I like to have scrap paper nearby as well so I can test my colors and see like, do I want to mix a little more water in? Do I want a more vibrant color, you know, etc., etc. So once we've got our blue mixed, then I'm using a bit of olive brown or olive green. The Mungyo has two uh, really nice greens here that are very natural and a little bit muddy love to use those and then I'm also going to grab with a wet brush a little bit of deep phthalo green and I'll mix a little of that on the palette and then I also like to mix a little bit into my olive brown and it gives this really nice natural shade of green uh, decided to put a little bit more um, navy into my blue just to darken it even a little bit more so I'm still kind of playing around and then I'll test out my greens on the scrap paper so you can see them you know you don't need to mix the exact same colors that I'm mixing but definitely mixing up your color palette and thinking about the overall color palette of the piece ahead of time it just puts you that much farther forward when you set out to paint um, you saw I mixed in really nice dark rich yellow. That was a combo of lemon yellow and a bit of um, yellow ochre. And then I'm, I'm mixing a bit of red. I tend to mix browns into my reds just to mute them ever so slightly. I didn't even end up using that red, <laughs> but um, that's the point of testing out your color palette ahead of time. You can say like, whoa, that's a lot of primary colors altogether. That's not quite what I'm going for. Um, so I mixed up a pink and this is a mix of magenta with white and a little bit of peach. So it gives me this really nice peachy pink. And again, mixing lots of water into my colors. So let's put that scrap paper aside. I have my little four by six watercolor paper here and I'm just going to tape it in place so it's not moving around. And then using a pencil, I'm going to sketch the form of a vase or a pot. It's very perfectly imperfect. It's not symmetrical. And I've just done it on the lower half of my uh, paper. Then using my pointed round brush, I'm picking up that nice dark blue and the fun thing about painting the porcelain is that we're we're doing leaf shapes. So we're, it's all organic, natural shapes. And that is perfect if you're just starting out with watercolors. You can see what I'm doing is I'm using this pointed round brush to my advantage. And I am using the very delicate tip of the brush to do the thin stems and branches. And then I run that belly of the brush across the page and add a little bit of extra pressure. And that allows me to make those nice larger organic leaf shapes. 
So really loose, really free, don't overthink it. Um, I'm gonna put a nice stripe across the top of the vase and I'm sort of wiggling the brush a little so it's not too straight. And then I just wanna fill in the entire area of this vase or pot or whatever it is with leaf shapes so that it, um, you know, you can really see the shape of it. So you wanna go right up to the edges of your pencil perimeter. Just a quick reminder for channel patrons, my card designs will be available on Patreon for you to print after today's video. If you'd like to support the YouTube channel, head over there and check out all the bonus content. Okay, our cute porcelain vase is done, so let's move on and paint some flowers. I have lots of pink paint in my round brush, and I paint these flowers by running that belly of the brush across the page, just one stroke or two strokes, and I paint them one petal at a time. And that's just a really easy, fun way to approach these very loose, very free watercolor flowers. Um, and the result is really pretty and, and organic and, and playful as well. Well, and I'm just doing a big cluster of these. Some are a little more pink, some are a little more peach. And then I'll come in with that dark olive green and I've just got that on the tip of my brush and I am doing some very perfectly imperfect stems, kind of joining everything together. And I'm thickening up those stems at the top near the flower blossom. Um, once I've got some stems in place, I will run that belly of the brush across the page and I will create some leaf shapes. Again, really playful, organic shapes. Don't overthink it. One or two brush strokes um, and that gives you a nice a leaf. Sometimes I just add a little water to kind of muss up the shape a little bit. And um, also I'll just add some more thin stems in here as well, just to kind of fill out the entire green area. I, I want the flowers to be nicely bordered by this dark green. And just adding a couple more little leaves there. You can see one or two brush strokes, leave it alone, call it a leaf. <laughs> and then I am using a dark brown. And again, just using the very tip of my brush to do some messy, playful little lines. And that just indicates the stamen and really makes those flowers come to life. Okay, so that first one, our painting is done. We're going to move it, let it dry, and I will tape my second piece of watercolor paper in place. And we're gonna do the same thing, but just a little slightly different. I always love to see multiple examples of a project when I'm learning something. So this one I did more of a squat vase shape or flower pot shape. And then for the porcelain, I'm just doing like these very, oval leaf shapes and you can see it's just one stroke of the brush per leaf and kind of creating this whimsical porcelain pattern just through the most simple of brush strokes kind of keeping them all clustered together and uh, again I'll do a messy line across the top of the vase and go right to that pencil edge so that you can really see the vase shape. Instead of doing more flowers, I thought it would be fun to paint some lemons. So I'm using that nice, dark, vibrant yellow. And just like we started with the flowers and then did the leaves, I'm gonna start with the lemons and then I'll add leaves. So you just wanna paint a cluster of lemons, you know, do as many as you want. Could be three, could be seven. Um, and they, they're all a little different. Again, very perfectly imperfect. I'm just using some very loose brush strokes to try to get that lemon shape right. You can see I use the belly of the brush for the main shape, and then I kind of go back in with the tip of the brush and just help develop those little fine, finer points of the lemons. You can also add a little bit of darker yellow, get that wet into wet effect while the paint is still uh, wet on the paper. And I did a little half lemon here. He's gonna be peeking out from behind a leaf. So there's my cluster. Now I'm taking a really dark green. This is actually the deep phthalo green mixed with a bit of purple and a bit of black. And it gives this very dark minty green that I love to use in combination with lighter colors. Um, but the formula here is the same, doing a couple stems and then doing lots of larger leaf shapes by simply running that brush across the page, one or two brush strokes, and then just leave it alone and call it a leaf. It's a leaf, if you say it's a leaf, they don't have to have the perfect shape. In fact, I think you'll find the more 
the more imperfect they are, the more natural and organic they look. And you get that loose, playful watercolor look as well. Some you could add extra water to make them slightly lighter. That just gives a nice contrast and flow to the entire piece. Um, and doing lots of stems as well, because again, I'm trying to kind of border these brightly colored lemons with the dark leaves all around and in behind. And it gives a nice big burst of color on the card, of course. Some of the leaves are a little smaller, some are a little larger, um, but other than that, there's not much to it. If you're learning watercolor, this is a chance to just play and have fun. Next up, I am taking a little bit of darker yellow and we'll do a little wet on dry. So once your watercolor has dried, it gives you a lot of precision. You can build up color. And that's what you see me doing here, just with a little bit of messy dark yellow. And then that's it, we've completed our watercolor painting. So let's put that aside to dry. The first one has dried. You wanna just make sure that it is dry. Don't wanna smudge. And then grab a brush marker or a fine liner, Sharpie, any kind of black pen. And we are just going to outline that vase. Now that step is optional. I just like a nice sharp black line. It gives it an illustrative, playful quality. And then in pencil, I'm going to write my message, you know, whatever you want the card for you might leave it blank and save this for you know when you actually need a card but I'm kind of just doing the message on a bit of an angle almost as if it's part of the illustration and um, I think that just has a nice sort of whimsical touch for this one I'm writing all my love again sort of curving with the illustration but across the bottom and uh, yeah okay so that is it two cards done all we need to do now is glue them to our blank cards and then they are ready to send to a friend or to keep in a drawer for that day when you actually do need a card. So there we go. I just use a glue stick usually, but rubber cement or even washi tape are also good options for sort of no muss, no fuss gluing. Um, and yeah, I remember the scalloped edge paper, I always get lots of questions. I found it at Michael's in the wedding section, but that was also like a year ago, so I don't know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this playful episode of 15 Minute Watercolor Cards. Patrons, don't forget to head over to Patreon to print my card design if you like, and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.